Okay, here you go, Nivia. Go ahead. Um, okay. Well, welcome everyone to the information session for the Pam and Rolando Del Maestro Family William Alzheimer Medical Student Essay Awards. So um the agenda for tonight, um, we'll basically do a brief introduction. And then we have a lot of speakers tonight. So first, um, Dr. Del Maestro and Pam will share a few words. Then we have Dr. Yurl. And then we have um, a few medical students who have done the um, essay award in the past. So they will give a few testimonies. And then lastly, we will have a question and answer period. So a bit of an introduction on uh, the essay awards. Basically, um, this essay contest uh, gives medical students the opportunity to explore themes of interest, including history, social studies, sociology, ethics, and humanities um, of the health sciences. Um, Usually there are three finalists who will be chosen. The prizes will be, um, so for first place it's a thousand, second place 500 and third place 250. And um, the uh, essays are usually published on the library website. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so a bit about the process for the application. So the first step would be a proposal. And um, this would be a maximum of one page. And what you would basically include in this proposal is the research topic, um, potential sources of information, and how you will carry out this um, research project, because basically we want to see if it is a feasible project to do over the summer. And in this proposal, you would include your full name, department, year, and contact details. So this proposal is due on May 17th, and you would basically have to email it to the email right here. It's the Oslo Library's email. Um, then the second step, once your proposal is approved, would be uh, the 300 word, 3,000 word essay, sorry. Um, and you will have to submit it in a word format. And this word count does not include the bibliography, appendices, and the tables. And with this um, 3,000 word essay, you would also have to submit a one to two page reflective piece. And this reflective piece basically will be describing what resources you came across in the library, how this project helped you as a researcher, and um, how the materials also helped you increase the scope, depth, and significance of the topic. So we don't have a specific date for this yet, but it will be due in October. Um, and then the next step would be the top three uh, essayists will be presenting at the McGill Medical Student Research Symposium. And this usually happens um, during Osler week. Um, if you attended the banquet this year, you would know that's around November um, 1st of 20, well, November 1st of uh, the year. So next year as well, it would be the same. And if you, next slide, please. Also, um, if uh, Dr. Yurl also sent the link, I believe, but if you do want to take a look at examples for reflective pieces, you could always um, head to the website, the Osgur uh, Library website, and you could see a few examples. And here's also a picture of the essayist last year who presented at the research symposium. And um, we do have testimonies from a few of them, so we will go on to that. Um, I'll also let my co-host Paris introduce the speakers tonight. Perfect. So uh, our first speakers, uh, Dr. Del Mastro and his wife, Pam. Um, Dr. Del Mastro is a prominent neurosurgeon and researcher known for his contribution to the field of neurosurgery. And throughout his careers, he's ha held several uh, academic and clinical positions, uh, including Professor of Surgery and Oncology at McGill University. He is currently the Director of the Neurosurgery uh, Simulations Research and Training Center at the MNI. And we're so fortunate to also have him as the uh, at the McGill University and to benefit from his expertise as the honorary Oslerian, um, uh, Osler, Osler librarian. Uh, it's also... Um, uh, interesting to know that uh, Dr. Del Mastro is actually the president of the American Osler uh, Society. Uh, Dr. Del Mastro has always had a passion for arts, history, and literature. And as a child, he dreamed of becoming a poet, uh, guided by his love for storytelling. 
Um, I've had the pleasure of reading some of his beautiful pieces, actually, and Dr. Um, Del Mastro ha has written some really nice articles that are, uh, one of them is actually his life story and how he met uh, the love of his life, Pam. Um, Pam, Dr. Del Mastro's wife and life partner, has always been actively involved in so many projects alongside him, including the establishment of the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada, and together they truly uh, form a power duo, contributing significantly to the medical community. We're so grateful for their foundation that has generously funded the essay contest for the past uh, over 10 years now. And uh, yeah, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Del Master and Pam to share a few words about the essay contest. Maybe, maybe you can stop sharing just for a second there, um, Paris. All right. Well, thanks everyone for uh, for coming on uh, the um, Zoom. What basically this information session is about is just to give you an idea of uh, what what this essay contest involves. You know some of the mechanics of it and what would be the expectations. What I can say is the mass, the vast majority of the individuals who have been associated with with winning the um, the contest have had their abstracts accepted at the American Ulster Society and uh, have also presented at the American Ulster Society. And so that's one of the things we also try to do is try to get as many of the, uh, the first, second, and third prizes uh, individuals to the um, Ulster Society. Uh, American Ulster Society meeting, which this year happens to be in Kansas City. For your group, <laughs> that particular meeting is going to be in Pasadena, California. And uh, I know um, that part of that meeting will be at the Huntington Library, which is one of the largest and most impressive libraries in uh, North America. So it's it's quite a uh, it's quite a place to uh, to be um, uh, involved with and visiting. And so um, our hope is that you you will learn something from. Uh, interacting with uh, the volumes and the people in the Ulster Library. Uh, and I think some of the people today will give you more information about that. And uh, Pam, if you want to have anything to say here? Well, just that when we decided to fund this project quite a few years ago now, I think for me it was a chance to allow medical students who up till this point have been focused mostly, uh, first of all, on getting into medical school, which I know can be like an amazing journey where you don't have time to think or even deal with what's in your heart. It's more like good marks and impressing people and interviews and all of that. And then you finally get there and then they throw science and science and science and facts at you that you have to learn. And for us, this was a chance to, I guess, convince all of you that there's a whole world for medicine outside just the science and getting accepted. It's it's how to be a good doctor. It's how to appreciate where, where we've come from in society and, and medicine, especially over the years and the history. Very far back or even 50 years back, things have changed so much. And this is a chance for all of you to maybe look at medicine um, from a different perspective and have a little time for yourself and look deep into yourself and see what might, might be something really important to you that you haven't thought about for a long time because you've just been so darn busy being a medical student. The only other thing I, I would say is that, uh, you know, during during medical school and after medical school, being a physician, there are many times which is isn't so easy to be a physician. You know, patients don't do well. Other things happen in your lives. And sometimes I think that if you can develop other interests and one of those interests happen to be in the humanities, whatever part of the humanities you're interested in, whether it be poetry or art or whatever, I think it helps you get over those rough patches a little bit and helps you sort of become sort of an overall, let's say, better person. And that being a better person, you end up being a better doctor, a better sort of family person, a better father, a better mother. I think it, it helps to have some grounding associated with uh, medicine. And the second thing is the Ulster Library is just an amazing place. And I, I hope that all of you will have some time, no matter what you decide to do, to visit the Ulster Library. And the Ulster Library is really sort of a bridge between medicine and the humanities. And I hope that all of you will you know, take the time to, to walk over that bridge, visit the Ulster Library, you know, and see some of the marvelous things that are in there. You know, uh, you know there, there's, 
It has, for example, Copernicus um, uh, book uh, related to uh, uh, the first, you know, the first depiction of the sun being the center of the solar system. And it's the only copy in, in Canada, for example. So there's many, many things in the Ulster Library that you won't see anywhere else. And you, as a medical student at McGill, have an incredible sort of resource, which is the Ulster Library of History Medicine. And I, I think you should take advantage of it because it's uh, it's a great thing to be involved in. And uh, now I think we can go on to the next part. I, I think it's, is it Mary that's up next? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Master. So I'll, uh, um, I'll give an intro on uh, Dr. Yarrell. Dr. Yale um, graduated from Yale and Cambridge from History of uh, Medicine and Sciences. And we're so lucky to have her as the head librarian of the Oslo Library. Uh, she is really instrumental in guiding the medical students um, in their research. Um, she helped me personally tremendously with my research um, with the Oslo Library Malina Foundation last year. So um, I invite uh, Dr. Yale to share some words with us and some of her experience helping the students. Sure, thanks so much, uh, Paris. Um, and also Dr. and Mrs. Del Mastro. Um, so I've been involved with the essay contest for, I guess, six years now. <laughs> this will be my seventh. Um, and it really is a wonderful opportunity to do something different. It used to be that in the early sort of decades of the library, um, medical history was a, more of a part of the <clears throat> curriculum, the medical curriculum than it is now. And at least as I understand it, there was a time when every student coming through had to do <clears throat> some kind of paper or something using the library. And of course, that's not true anymore. So the essay contest in some ways provides an opportunity for people to have that outlet, as we've said. Um, a few things I want to clarify off, off the, to begin with. Um, one is that, you know, even though you know, I'm an historian, uh, historian of medicine, as well as a librarian and archivist. Um, the, the essay that you do doesn't have to be a history essay necessarily. The, the idea is to get into the humanities. And so it's sort of, <clears throat> um, or social sciences for that matter. Most of them do end up being maybe historical uh, in some way. But just to say that, you know, if you're working in anthropology or sociology or something like that, um, that's fine as well. It's really the idea is to get out of the hard sciences and to do something where you're getting into the resources. Um, the other thing is, I see us as, as being a resource for you. Um, it doesn't mean that your project has to be based in materials that we hold at the library. Again, they often are. Um, but that's really the requirement is just that you're doing something that's based in the humanities um, and that gets you out of it. And we're here to help connect you to whatever sources are the ones that are going to help you write the best essay. Um, that said, I do hope you will use our resources uh, because they are rich. Um, we have archives. So for instance, we have the archive of Wilder Penfield, who founded the Montreal Neurological Institute. It, that is probably our most used archive. Uh, in fact, it definitely is. It's like, I think over 300 boxes of material. So people are going to be studying this for generations to come, and it's never going to get old. Um, you know, we have some nurses, letters, and diaries from the war, as well as um, we have the largest collection of Paris theses outside of France, I believe. Um, and basically anyone who is a name in medicine who went through the Paris system in the 19th century, for instance, it's kind of interesting to see that we have the thesis that they wrote as a medical student. Um, we also, of course, we have, you know, uh, works in all sorts of languages. So, you know, maybe, you know, Latin, um, English, French are probably our most common languages, also German, but we've recently digitized, for instance, all of our Middle Eastern languages materials. I also, in just this past year, bought a 15th century Arabic manuscript um, on neuroanatomy um, that someone can look at. We've digitized that. I've actually just been contacted by the book dealer who sold us that and said he's found another manuscript, obviously written in the same hand, um, so we're going to try to bring that to the library as well in the next few months. Um, we've recently purchased quite a bit of material in ancient Chinese medicine, um, and we have quite a bit of Japanese material as well. And the Japanese material is really fascinating for showing really the, the dialogue, uh, the medical dialogue that came with the trade, for instance, between the Dutch and the Japanese, and especially in the 18th century. Um, and of course, we have a lot of local material. I collect very heavily and, you know, what I would consider is almost new up to contemporary 
um, medical issues in Quebec. So we have the birth control handbooks. Um, we have a lot of public health material. We have pamphlets. We have a big gray literature collection, which means material that's basically created not by big publishing houses, like, you know, not the CMAJ, for instance, um, but on um, caring for HIV and AIDS. So where communities created their own materials, and this is stuff that's often not going to get preserved in a library. Um, and we have uh, an arrangement uh, with the KD, the Canadian AIDS um, treatment information exchange that when their material is no longer current for their for people who who access their library essentially that they'll send it to us so just to to realize we have such a range of material we have artifacts as well so if you're interested in something i guess talk to us and we can figure out a way hopefully to support your research um, i also want to make sure to emphasize that your your submissions of your essays can be in english or french um, and in terms of the essay itself, um, I also want to clarify that the the judging of the essays. I know, um, I think it was Nivia was mentioning that we have the top the top three get cash prizes, and that's based on the quality of the essay itself, but also the presentation that comes at the end. So that's it's sort of there are two components that go into determining the the final order of the at least the top three essays. Um, and in the recent years, we've tried really hard to make sure that everyone who's participating in the essay contest, uh, regardless of whether they're one of the top three, um, can also present. Um, you know, and this is something that we hope to continue. We have to do the planning for that because obviously that's a it becomes a really big we've been calling it the medical student research symposium because it's, you know, we have so many participants now. It's really wonderful. Um, and I think I'm going to stop talking so that people can actually ask questions. <laughs> um, but I sort of just wanted to at least lay out some of the things that I know people usually ask me. And I guess the only other thing I'll say is that um, in terms of the proposal, I know they already mentioned it's really so we can tell that you have a viable topic, but also so that we can help set you up with a mentor. And we do one of the best things I think about the essay contest is that you are mentored through this process um, in terms of the research, in terms of the writing. Um, and you you can find your own mentor if you want. Obviously, that's 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 wonderful for us. But uh, if you can't find someone, we will help you as well. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yarrow. So next, we're actually moving to uh, some testimonials from past participants. I know that right now we have Lily and Amina on the call. So maybe we can start with Lily and Amina, um, and um, we also have two more uh, testimonials, and once the, those uh, someone joins us, and then Megan also is coming at seven p.m. Okay, perfect. So I invite maybe Amina or Lily, whichever is more comfortable, they can start. I'm just like trying to plug in my computer before it dies. So maybe Amina, if you could get started, and right, right. I'm happy to start. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Amina. I'm a second year medical student. Um, and I participated in the essay contest last year. Um, I don't have that much to add. I think that actually um, that uh, Dr. and Ms. Del Maestro said a lot of it. I think it it is just a really great way to um, kind of do a deep dive into a topic. And because um, I feel like in first year, especially so much material is thrown at us and we're not really able to critically appraise a lot of what comes at us. So it's really a good opportunity to kind of deep dive into a certain topic that you're interested in and um, learn more about it. Um, my topic, and yeah, I, one of the big questions I had at first, cause I thought when I was first reading about it, that it was really um, necessary to do like a historical piece my topic was really not it it was not a historical essay at all it was really about a kind of modern um day problem and um it, it was really based in kind of political theory and sociology so if that's your interest um you can definitely do something like that um and yeah i think there's there's so many topics to explore i, I think <laughs> i could participate in this essay contest for like every year, <laughs> every year for the rest of my medical career, because yeah, just understanding like even the precedence of why we do the things that we do in medicine, the precedence for 
certain medical procedures. I think all of those things are really important. And um, if you're interested in something like social determinants, uh, doing a deep dive into, um, you know, why certain diseases are prevalent um, in different places, I think it it does really help you kind of have a different and better understanding of medicine and um, become a kind of better and more empathetic doctor. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And um, I, I thought it was really also like one of the bonuses was to meet um, other like-minded individuals who, who are interested in the humanities and um, talking with people who are interested in that, like classmates and um, everyone a part, who's a part of the author society. I thought that was kind of like a really great bonus. You get to meet some really wonderful, um, thoughtful people. And um, I, I think it's worth it, honestly, even just for that. So I'll stop there, but happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Amina. Um, Lily, are you ready to share some of your testimonial with us? Sure. So I guess like similar to what Amina was saying, how amazing the essay contest was, and I'm so happy that I took part, of, part in it, but I actually did it. Now it's almost going to be three years ago. So for my summer of med P to med one, and now I'm currently in my third year of med school. Um, I did my project on, it was called the Montreal intern strike of 1934. And it was basically an anti-Semitic protest against um, a French hospital who appointed a Jewish intern as their chief intern. And so I did a deep dive on the actual strike. And then I tried to like conclude my essay with, um, I guess like broader conclusions of racism in modern medicine. So I thought it was fun because I was able to like integrate things from the past and things in the future. And I really got to like make my essay into what I wanted it to be, which is like what I thought was fun about this compared to other research projects that I've done. It was really like, I guess like speaking more coming from my heart than like online sources because I got to integrate what I want, the sources I wanted into my essay. And um, overall, I thought it was really cool because I got to also connect with the family of the original intern that my essay focused on. And they actually went to, like, I spoke to them on Zoom and I got to know a little bit about their family's history. And then they actually came to the um, essay competition presentations, which in my year were on Zoom because of COVID. But I think like, that was also a cool part of this whole project. And I also was really happy with the mentor that I got set up with. Um, this was one of the first times I was writing a historical essay. So if you don't have any background in history or arts or medical history, I really do not think this is a point to worry about because you have the support of the library as well as your mentor and past essayist and anyone you need to write a good essay. Um, and I guess in terms of my sources, I used some of the sources from the library, but then I also went ahead and used some sources from the JGH. I used some sources from the Jewish Public Library. So I think like if the Oster Library does not have all the sources you need, that's not a problem. I think you could find sources everywhere and still make a great essay. And then, um, Amina, I don't think you had the opportunity to travel to AOS yet. I think it's this year. So I went to AOS and um, I got to meet like really, really wonderful people that I'm still in contact with today. I traveled with, um, in my year, the, it was one Bean Award winner and one Molina Award winner. And um, I had no idea who they were before traveling, but it was fun because I got to travel with um, more senior medical students and now like I have I often ask them questions about residency and like general med school questions so I think it's also a great way to connect with more senior med students in different schools and also at McGill and I also thought like AOS was one of the coolest conferences that I've attended ever so I'm really happy that I had that opportunity and um I think that's pretty much it. But if you guys have questions about choosing a topic 
um, making a good presentation for your present your essay presentations and later on if you end up going to AOS I'm free to answer any of your questions. Thank you Lily I just wanted to add that I watched your presentation uh, that was recorded and I really enjoyed it and I also got to be there uh, in person for Amina's presentation also which was really nice and it was in person this past year. So uh, if you guys ever want to watch the past presentations, um, they're all on the Osler Library website, I think, right, May Dr. Yarrow? Yeah. Is that, yeah. So you can always, it also gives you a lot of good ideas on the type of topics. It might inspire you. Um, I Before I applied for the Molina Foundation, um, I might do the essay too, but basically just watching the past uh, essays and watching the past presentation kind of inspires you and gives you ideas of, you know, um, it might give you ideas on, on a topic that you might be interested in. We have I Megan. Want, yeah. I just wanted to add one more thing that like up until last year, I was having people contact me on like Twitter or by email about my essay presentation that I did so long ago because the AOS, I think also live, live streams them. And then we also had the YouTube up from, um, from like Osler day, November, whatever from that so it's cool because like up until like literally a year ago which is two days after my presentation I had people still contacting me with questions or like thanking me for doing the presentation amazing so Megan you can go and you are actually going to the AOS conference so maybe you can tell us a little bit about your experiences past year and what's coming up for you after the essay Okay, hi everyone. Um, so my name is Megan. I'm a med two now, and I did uh, I participated in the essay competition uh, in 2023, and I won it won first place last year. Um, I'm sorry if I'm gonna echo anything that's already been said by Lily or Amina. Um, I just joined now because I'm actually um at school um in class. Um, but so my topic was about uh euthanasia and palliative care and kind of the similarities between them and how uh, it's actually possible to think of euthanasia as being integrated within a palliative care approach. Um, so it was super interesting. I mean, I'm sure like Amina and Lily have said this already, but I really loved the process of it. It was really one of the most meaningful things I've done in my, in my med school so far. Um, it really allowed me to reconnect with a love for writing. Um, it allowed me to explore some really important ethical um, and kind of fundamental concepts um, to medicine, to work through some ideas, like use critical thinking skills. So all um, all things that I love to do um, and that we don't necessarily like get to practice enough within the curriculum. Um, so I really recommend the uh, participating in the essay competition. Um, and then, yeah, as I kind of jumped in and heard Lily saying, I think one of the things that's so fun about this is that it is, it is a formal research project that can definitely allow you to um, present at conferences. So I'm going to be attending the AOS um, this year and then also the Canadian History of Medicine um, conference, which Paris, I think you're presenting at too. Uh, so that's really so that's really cool because it allows you to um, present at those types of platforms and get that kind of very formal recognition. But at the same time, what I really enjoyed about the essay is that it is at the end of the day an essay. And so it allows you to use your own voice when you're writing, which is different from other types of research. And that's something that I, I think is um, fun to work with and, and really interesting. Um, so that's kind of, I guess, what I'd have to say. Um, I don't know if there were any other topics that the others touched on that you'd like me to touch on too. Um, but yeah, I would really, really, re really recommend it. And I have to get back to um, my class actually, but I'll leave in the chat my email and my Facebook contact. And I'd love to chat with anyone about how to find a topic, how to write the uh, project proposal or just the entire process itself. Thank you so much, Megan. Megan actually had to leave her class to join us. So thank you so much, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Is Saman joining us? I don't think he can tonight. Okay. I think um, Lily, Megan, and Amina kind of like shared really good uh, testimonials and on their experiences. So uh, if people have uh, questions, um, please feel free to um, reach out. Um, I know Megan just shared her contact. Uh, Amina and Lily, if it's okay to share your contact so people can reach out if they have questions. Do we have any questions?
Well, Hi, maybe if I can ask a quick question regarding the proposals. Does everyone who submit a proposal get put into in contact with uh, someone or like, is there some sort of process through which certain proposals are picked to continue on with the research? I guess I should probably answer that one. Um, we try really hard to make sure that everything goes forward. Um, I think in the all the times that I've been doing it, um, we only had one time when we had uh, trouble getting a, a mentor for someone in that particular cycle. Uh, we did find someone for them later where I think they were planning to do it the following year. But um, basically, you know, we're very committed to, and it, that also was something I, I'm not sure, but I believe that was also a later uh, submission. But pretty much if you give us a proposal, we're gonna work with you to try to make it happen. Um, so. Yeah, awesome. I, think, Thank you. I think that that Mary and the rest of us all work to uh, to try to find a person uh, if you have a specific topic that uh, an individual who would be interested in helping. You. Some of these individuals are at at uh, McGill. Sometimes we found individuals at other places, and sometimes you can have a, even have a, a you know an individual here, for example, maybe a co supervisor somewhere else, another university who's a, an absolute expert in that area. So. It gives you an opportunity to, especially having a mentor, I think, is one of the major aspects of this um, this whole process. And um, and you also get to meet all kinds of different people and, and some of those individuals can help you in the future from the point of view of being involved in other sort of projects like like say the Amina, Amina Molina Awards or other types of things. For example, there's just, um, uh, there's an Abin Award also from the American Oyster Society. So there's a whole series of awards that are possible, and sometimes the essays have been, uh, you know, part of the of that process. Some of the individuals who have won essays have also won, um, you know, a, a Molina Awards, and and also sometimes the Bean Awards. So it's all many many individuals have gone on to win uh, all three. To be honest with you, so it's interesting how uh, being involved in one of these projects can sometimes get you involved in a bunch of other ones too. They don't have to be the same project at all, just just different projects. Yeah, you touched on, on a really good point. So I think that like, it's a good starting point when usually like people who do the essay usually find that they have so much interest that they end up wanting to get involved in other uh, projects and research. And in the case, for example, for Amina and Megan, both of them, I think this year you guys are doing the Molina Foundation research, uh, which is kind of nice um, to kind of continue being uh, a part of the also library contests and research. I just have a question if that's okay. Um, so I recently submitted a, uh, a research uh, art or like a history research essay for a, for another competition. Um, and so I already kind of have a mentor lined up for this one. So I was wondering if I should still submit a proposal or if it's or kind of what's the procedure with that if I already have like kind of a mentor in mind. Um, yes, because we want to sort of basically we keep a sort of a list of what everyone is doing and, <clears throat> and that way we keep it all together and collated. Um, you can also sort of add that in that you already have a, a mentor and what you're going to write on, you know, maybe just to, to show that you have your your project like a, a paragraphing it doesn't have to be. Um, but yeah, definitely um, do at least let us know what you're working on or I know some people and I don't know if. Yeah, I guess at least one is on who did submit for the Molina Foundation Awards and who is also now um, planning to in, use that same topic for the essay that basically you can let us know in that case, because we do already have a proposal, but let us know, you know, that you're working on that same topic and who your mentor is. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sure. I also had a question concerning the proposal. Um, I was wondering how specific um, our subject had to be in the proposal, because I feel like a lot of the essay will be a journey of like discovering and, and diving into different types of sources. And so I was wondering if we have a theme in mind, if that's good enough, um, and or if we can propose sub themes to that, like different angles, for example, an ethical angle or a more historical, like a Montreal in this era angle. 
um, and if we can reach out to the librarians as well prior to submitting our proposal so that we can kind of narrow it down and have a better idea where we're heading um, for the summer. Uh, yeah, I'd say definitely reach out. <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, we will definitely advise you to narrow your topic as much as you can. Um, a big part of the reason that we have the proposals is to know that you're working on something viable. And it's only a 3000 word essay, which is actually really, really challenging to try to figure out how you take all that information and sort of, <clears throat> you know, you're going to have so much more information in your mind and how you're going to have it actually just sort of distill it down to 3000 words. So part of what we're doing with the proposal is saying, you know, basically, you know, you can take a big topic and sometimes people do come with, you know, that they want to, I don't know, do all of the history of women's health or something like that, you know, and part of that is then for us to work with them and say, okay, you know, is there another angle we can work on? Is there a specific theme? Is there a specific time period or geographical area? So um, definitely the more you can narrow it down, the better, because um, you're going to, you're going to be more efficient in your time that way too, but we're definitely here to help you with that process. Thank you. I think the most important thing that you're is that you're engaged with the project, whatever the particular aspect of the project is. And if you can get engaged with the project, then you know it will it will make its own sort of way. You know, there's certain certain things you can start on, and sometimes something very much more interesting comes up. And I'm sure there's you're you're not held directly to what your project is initially. It's what you end up producing as an essay related to that project and your presentation and actually are the important parts. How, how have you grown during this process? And how have you used your, um, the abilities that you've had to gain information and use that information to both write it and also present it in a way that sort of can excite other people in that area. And I'm that, sure that is- Go ahead. Right. No, I was going to say that's a very important point to not feel like even though we do want you to submit a proposal that's, you know, as focused as you can to not feel like you're completely tied to that, because um, I actually think it was Megan who isn't with us anymore. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but who was actually reflecting on the fact that, you know, at one point they were quite sure that they were going to go in a certain direction or have a certain argument. And then that changed in the course of the research and that we understand that that's part of the process. Or sometimes, you know, maybe you're doing research and then you'll, you'll realize that there's this little snippet that you found that could potentially be the entire thing. And that's okay to do that. That's, that's part of what happens when you're doing research. Raza? Yes, hello. Oh, whoops, let me see. Okay, sorry, I'm in the same um, class as Megan, so I had to step out for a second as well. Um, my question I had in two parts. One was if we do um, this project, I know it's essentially dedicated for the summer times, but let's say uh, we were to finish earlier, is that okay? Or it, it should be going into like end of the summer and into the fall? That's totally up to you. <laughs> so, I mean, basically, as long as you get your essay in by the deadline, it's up to you when you work on it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And my second question would be, I noticed for in regards to hopefully after completion, and if we want to publish, there were options where under the website at the bottom, it said, as example, you encourage at the McGill Medicine Journal. Um, if not, there's also the Osler newsletter. Uh, if we go about that, once we get to that stage, we sh should we contact um, the library to see how to facilitate with it? Or um, should we go about it independently on our own? I wasn't sure how to navigate that part. Uh, I think that's probably the sort of thing you would want to work with your mentor on because they okay. might have an idea. I mean, some people, those were, you know, we had spoken with the uh, McGill um, Journal of Medicine quite some time ago mm -hmm. and, and, you know, agreed that we would encourage this. But the thing is that some people are really getting into very, you know, specific and, you know, interest, you know, of topics that are of interest to a certain community. And so your mentor might know that there's a journal that's a, you know, a highly regarded peer reviewed journal, or for instance, that might um, publish your material. And I would definitely advise that you, you go that route if possible, but definitely talk to your uh, mentor about it and try to figure out the best place mm -hmm. to publish if you want to. 
Perfect. Thank you so much. And some of the, some of the individuals who have um, who have done the essays have published them, uh, and uh, and so some of them have have morphed into, for example, uh, let's say it's book chapters and other aspects too. So there's there's many different ways of, of publishing your uh, your work. Clearly, it's an advantage to publish your work because it's out there; people can can uh, can uh, read it and uh, comment on it, and, and also having the ability to put it into the other areas. Um, is, is interesting too. Um, believe it or not, the American Ulster Society is working on developing its own journal right now. So one of the reasons we're doing that is that so individuals like yourselves will have a, well, let's say have a better and easier time of putting your work into a to a journal. Um, and so that's another aspect of it that, that, that in, you know, as what's coming up is those types of, uh, of situations. The other thing I will tell you about is the American Ulster Society has uh, developed what's called an international uh, medical st student scholarship. And so if if your particular project, for example, has an international component, uh, these scholarships will begin in 2025. And what these scholarships do is allow you to spend time in England or Ireland or, and, um, and spend a whole summer there and um, look at primary sources uh, in that particular environment. And again, that's sort of, there's, there's many sort of opportunities that, uh, that are being developed for medical students to spend time in other places. And um, I can tell you from my own experience, uh, spending time in another institution uh, and learning uh, you know, things from in another country is, is amazingly uh, advantageous to you. And sometimes my time, for example, in Sweden sort of set up my whole career. It's just, just happened that way, that's all. Are there any other questions? Well, parents, I have to thank you and Nev and everybody for putting this all together. That's great, and uh, we um, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm certainly I'm certainly available to uh, people ask questions, etc. I have not been involved in being a mentor for for essay contests because I think that's sort of in the of my wife because that sort of uh, uh, is uh, is. You know, have some, of and some bias involved in it, let me put it that way. So I think that, but I can, I certainly can help you get, you know, put put ideas in your head about uh, who might be a particular mentor. And and, if, and I can ask you to actually ask those mentors if uh, if they would help you if, if, that, if, that's an, if that's what is needed to be done. And they don't always help, but many times they do. Thank you, Dr. Del Maestro and Pam again for funding this contest. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yarl, for joining. And thank you, everyone, especially, first of all, our past content, uh, participants who joined and shared their experiences. Uh, I hope that inspired some of you to want to consider doing the essay this year. And uh, yeah, thank you, everyone who tuned in. Uh, please feel free to uh, reach out, email, Facebook, and we all will be happy to answer your questions. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, Minel.